So again, what I did have when I left my job, I did have the stuff on the right here, but they were just like ideas and bullet points. And what I really did though is this part over here. Okay, so I'm actually gonna, I wanna walk you guys through this um, and how I actually, how I actually do this, okay? This is uh, as if it was my whiteboard. Uh, let me share my whiteboard iPad here. <laughs> okay. Shazam! I don't know if belief, need more story. <laughs> hey, there we go, opa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool. Okay, so what I'm going to go do is I'm going to walk through this framework I was just sharing with you guys. And this is uh, my offer creation formula. It's not just Xavier. This is actually what fuels Xavier, okay? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to position, I'm going to place in front of my dream customer inside my market and only them, my dream buyer, my blue products, my Play-Doh thing, right? And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start listing out objections. So it's actually the first step in this is objections. Oops, making sure I can, you guys are seeing this. Yeah, okay. First we got objections. Uh, what are the objections we should create? Um, Offermind. Let's say you guys hear about Offermind for the first time. What are the objections you, you think people have about coming? Cost of travel. Cost of travel, date. Who is that? Look at those eyeballs. What's the content? Is it worth it? Content. It's worth it. The ROI on there. Am I ready? Am I ready? That was my biggest fear about going to Funnel Hacking Live the first year. I thought I'd be outclassed. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, these guys, Russell says there's millions of millionaires everywhere. Like, oh man, like I'm not, I don't qualify. That was 100% what mine was, which is what? Internal. Major internal. <coughs> is that why you wore a suit? I thought that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's so true, yeah, yeah. Will it work? Will it work? Oops. What else? Yeah, uh, yeah. Can I do it? Um, can I do it? I've been to all the courses. This is probably the same. How is it different? Yeah, yeah. How's this different? I think it froze or something on you guys. Hey, cool. How is it different? Too much epicness. <laughs> okay, now what do you guys think the top ones are? What's the biggest vehicle one on that list? Uh, I'm going to say false belief. That's not Facebook. False belief. Am I ready? So we got the first vehicle, internal, external. Okay. <clears throat> I'll tell you from my perspective too, the biggest one that I see from people is uh, about vehicle is either I already have an offer or just put the, like, uh, I don't really need an offer. Like they don't see the need a lot of times, right? Uh, which is one of the reasons why I sell somebody in the ClickFunnels space because they are at least usually aware of direct response marketing in general, right? Um, <clears throat> How's it different? So I choose the top one. How's it different? It's gonna get a little messier. Okay. Go write a little short, more shorthand. This board gets totally full. Okay, internal. What's the biggest internal one? Yeah, probably that one. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, outclassed. What's the biggest external? Probably. It's usually cost. Yep, especially for an event. Cost. Okay. Now, now that we know, right? Uh, so objections, and I'll go and I'll turn them into false beliefs themselves. Um. We, since all belief is upheld by story, I ask, well, what story installed that belief, right? So now I work sideways. 
and we ask, <laughs> it's cool, it's catching up. Come on, baby. Okay. What story do you think is causing the fear or the false belief? Is this going to be any different? What's the experience somebody had that's causing them to say that? There you been there, tried that, failed. Is it going to catch up? Uh, we got a lot more written. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so I usually put OS, old story. And what I'll do is I'll start writing through and I'll say, okay, let's check that. No, this is key. This is actually how I create a lot of my hooks and my sales messages is this right here. Okay. So vehicle, what's the old story? The old story is probably, um, how's it any different? Oh, I've been to Funnel Hacking Live. That's a common one I got. Um, I also got ones around, um, um, also got ones around like, actually, let's go straight to internal on this one. Um, I don't have a funnel yet which is funny because you need an offer to have a funnel. Um, no funnel. Funny enough, the other one besides cost I'll get sometimes is, that dude talks a lot. <coughs> they don't like that I go late, which is kind of funny. Content yeah, they get overwhelmed, which is why I've shrunk stuff so much down like, uh, recently. Uh, cost, what's the fear around the cost? I've spent time and energy, and this is how I do it right here, by the way. I've spent um, time and energy. I've been to events in the past, and I really didn't get an ROI from it. I spent money, and I did nothing with it. And I just know that on the flight home, I'm gonna forget it all anyway. Okay, that's, that's a big one. Um, I'm gonna forget it. Forget what I learned. Okay. Now we are marketers. So now that we know the old story, it's time for me to go brainstorm the new story. So what story could I tell somebody who is having the belief, I've been to Funnel Hacking Live, how is this any different? What story could I tell on my stories? Like you guys have been listening to my podcast a while, what would I say to that? Fish left. Fish left. <laughs> 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 I probably broke it. I... Uh, oh, I did do something to it. It's not Valiant, by the way. It's probably me. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so what I'm going to go do is now that I know the old story, again, I'm going to think through what is the new story I could say to them in order to fight that belief itself. Okay, so um, I'm going to, uh, if the, if the uh, misbelief here is I've already heard this stuff, you know what I would do is I'd probably tell the story of the first time I sat down as Russell's Funnel Guy in an inner circle meeting and it blew my brain, <laughs> okay? Brains on the wall, right? It's everywhere. I was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Super graphic, sorry. <laughs> but I'm gonna go in and so new story, okay? Epiphany bridge script. This is where that happens. Still drawn? Nice, just catching up. Okay. Between old story and new story is the epiphany bridge. That's where the bridge actually happens. Okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, so I usually draw like a little bridge right there in between. Just whoop, look a bridge back and forth. There it is. Okay, that's the bridge. Epiphany bridge script. What are we bridging? Old beliefs to new beliefs. That's what we're bridging. And that's what we're guiding them across as well. So the epiphany bridge script is the script I'm using. I don't necessarily always say they're false beliefs. Like, are these your false beliefs? You know. By definition, that doesn't exist, right? Like, no, I don't have any false beliefs. I believe them, you know what I'm saying? So I can't start with that. What I'm doing is I'm trying to anchor in their head and figure out what's actually causing them to believe that. And so what I'll do is I could say something like, I remember the first year I went to Funnel Hacking Live, one of the things I was most nervous about is I had been to a lot of events in the past and uh, these events I went to in the past, they were really good and they were awesome, but after about the 10th one, they kind of all just felt like the exact same thing. And I remember this one time, Russell had me coming on in and he had me go to the inner circle and I sat down, it was, the, it was my dream to be in the inner circle. All I wanted to do is be in the inner circle. In fact, I remember when I was in college, I was walking through the basketball court and I looked at my phone and Russell had dropped a message to everybody saying, an email, he didn't know who I was yet, because it's a true story. See, I'm belding them together here. Um, I remember looking at him, this email, and this email said, almost sold out. And I was like, no, and I opened up the email and I saw inside there him saying, 
At 100 people, I will close down the inner circle. We are at 87. You have 13 if you want to jump on in. And I right there stopped and I responded and I said, please don't close it down. I knew he was an autoresponder, but I still was just doing it out of the principle of it. He never saw this. Okay. I showed him the email later. And he was like, you know, that was an autoresponder. I was like, I know it was an autoresponder. I knew that I was writing it. It was just trying to have momentum. Okay. <laughs> it's really happened. And I was standing there and I was broke as a joke. And I was like, it was 25 grand at the time. And I was like, no, don't close it down. I'm coming. I'm coming. I know you don't know who I am, but I'm working my face off. I will try to get to Funnel Hacking Live. I'm trading funnels to get there. Please don't shut it on me. Okay. And what happened was, and I finally started working for him and I went and I uh, sat down next to him super late one night. He sends me a Vox at right before uh, the first inner circle meeting as I was working there. And he goes, do you just want to come sit on in there and be a little fly on the wall? And I about died. It's all I wanted to be in that group, to hear the minds that were going crazy on there. That's all I wanted. And for him to invite me like that, I almost felt like an imposter because I hadn't paid 25 grand. So I felt outclassed. I felt terrible. I felt like I didn't want to go because what if someone asked me a question they found I didn't pay? Oh man, I know there's a principle to paying. Those who pay, pay attention. I heard him say it a million times. Okay, does that make sense? I'm just riffing, okay? But it's the Epiphany Bridge script that I'm waving in there. I went internal, I went external. What were my internal desires? This is all I wanted, I was all I wanted to be here. What were my external desires? Be in the room, proximity is power. What were the brains saying, right? And then I had a wall, dang it, I'm broke. Okay, I'm, I'm actually following the script in my head. I'm just making that up, okay? And so this is what I go do though. So I think through old story, uh, the old story or experience that's causing that belief. And then let's go into new story here. So the first, oh, I didn't come to a full close on this. Um, I sat down inside the room and I realized in the first 20 minutes that if I left and had learned nothing else, that it would have been worth it like crazy. I realized that it wasn't that the events I was going to weren't amazing. It was that I just needed to kind of elevate those who were going to those events. If uh, proximity really is power, I needed to sit and actually go to events where really rich people were going, really rich marketers who had gone from the ground up, who did not get handed anything in their life, who fought tooth and nail for everything they gained. I don't know, bang that up too. Does that make sense? But now it went full circle and what did I just start fighting? How is it different than anything else? You see how that, that, that works? And now they start opening in their mind a little gap. What if this is different? So I would keep going if it was about, funnel, if it was about offer mind. And so that's why we created this event here. I went on and I started making all these uh, different events and running events with Russell and he and I would tag team these three day events for these really high ticket coaching programs. And while it was amazing, we had great success stories. I also took silent note of the things that were not going well or the things that we thought were amazing, but truly were just kind of fluff and were what we thought was cool, but didn't really help the client or the customer at all. So I stopped uh, doing those things. I left ClickFunnels and I went back and I created this event. And what's happened is I've gone in and I've perfected it. You guys are gonna learn my offer creation formula and actually be able to launch and have your offer by the end of it. It's like, oh, cool. I'm just making this up, okay? So, but but that's, that's how I would tell a story and then tie it back to the false belief to go smash it. Yeah? Yeah? Does the story suck? All right, I'll take note. <laughs> Bring it up here. Um, okay, outclassed. I kind of started hitting that one as well, and that's fine. You can hit multiple false beliefs in there. Uh, my first inner circle meeting. Okay, now what story could I tell to combat the outclassed thing. Ah, my first Funnel Hacking Live event, I was so nervous to go because I, he told us that there were millionaires sitting all over the place and I was so far from being a millionaire. And I had built tons of funnels and I kind of assumed that everyone was gonna be this major funnel nerd. So my wife and I, I really did this. I told her, what if I'm outclassed? Meaning, I, I don't care about the class, meaning I, what if I have nothing to contribute? That was really what I was nervous about. And she and I sat at the kitchen table and we actually role played <laughs> things I could talk about at my first Funnel Hacking Live, <laughs> okay? Which I really did. And like freaking rehearsed it on my flight that I traded funnels for on the way over there, okay? And, uh, and what was crazy is I got there and I realized that it's, even if they were like complete millionaires, you had have no idea. It's the coolest kind of person and people and group of people and community that you ever found in your life. So amazing, so helpful. Everyone's so willing to come out. And I remember one guy stayed up with me till 3 a.m. helping me brainstorm just for nothing, just cause, okay? 
to found out he was insanely wealthy afterwards. And just because. No one knew who I was. No one knew, Russell didn't know who I was. And I'd brainstorm and bootstrap the whole way there. And that whole thing about filling out class, frankly, if someone makes you feel that way, let, go, come tell me because I want to kick him out for you. All right? That's not what this is about. Okay? <laughs> and I'm going to come in and I'm going to start telling stories like that. Uh, role play. Role play um, conversation, frankly. You guys getting this? Yes. What is, I'm gonna play guess, let's guess in my head here, but uh, secret one, secret two, you getting it? <laughs> secret three, let's come up with a story for cost. Uh, frankly, if it's about Funnel Hacking Live and coming to offer mine and all that, I mean, my bootstrapping story is a pretty good one. Sleeping in a lobby. Okay. But now I have the story to introduce secret one, to fight the old story that really is fighting the false belief. Get that? Okay, now it keeps going sideways. Okay, the next thing I go in is I figure out, so if it's old story, new story, the next thing I go for is I actually, there's two things. Um, the first thing is um, product, slash bonus, slash value. What kind of products could I, could I, could I give away? to help somebody fight this whole thing of how is it different. That's a vehicle-based objection. I'm questioning the thing itself. Guarantee. You give a guarantee that it's going to be different? Absolutely. What else could I say? Previous recordings. Previous recordings. That's actually why I do it. Yeah. Uh, the previous recordings. You can get 2018 Final Hacking Live recordings. Or, uh, sorry, sorry, 2018 <laughs> Offer Mind recordings um, to help you prepare as so you can see all the pieces and parts that are in there. Plus, I want you to know that year I went way too deep <laughs> and uh, it's not going to be like that at all. But if you're a total nerd like me and you want to go deep with it, the 2018 recordings are like the just super deep ones. Um, like Russell mentioned that on his speech. How many of you guys came to offer mine again? This last one? Cool. Remember, if Russell on there, he was like, Stephen decided to become the offer guy, and then he went deep, and then he went like, whoa, like way deep. And you're like, like holy crap, are you coming back, right? <laughs> and then he finally came back, he realized the parts that weren't awesome, and then he like chopped it all out, and now it's like super digestible, <laughs> right? Okay, so we got uh, 2018 replay. Okay, now what bonus slash uh, internal product value could I give for, I might feel outclassed. You know what would be cool? What if I had them come in the night before and we did a cool networking party? So break the ice before they get in the room the next day. Break the ice, everyone gets to chat. Um, we'll cater it, we'll have food and drink there. We will, um, I'll say a few words, but we'll do things to help people get to know each other. That way they, what's that? And show up in your jammies. Yeah, like Midnight Mastermind, exactly. Yeah, um, <laughs> that happened on the ship. <laughs> uh, the two comic up ship a few weeks ago. Um, what was I saying? Networking thing. Networking party. Okay, cost. How can I help people with cost? Finance. What's that? Finance. You can finance it. Early bird special, which is definitely something that we do. Um, yeah, when you buy this other thing, your ticket's included, which actually, I did that with OfferMind Masterclass. Okay, that's, that's why we did that. Um, so you got extra value for it, which fights the cost belief. Um, uh, when you buy this affiliate thing, I'm gonna give you a discount. That was a big one. So hey, you're worried about the cost of that, but you also want this thing called, you know, make affiliates great again. That's gonna give you a $150 discount. That's, that's what we did. That worked really well. Um, as far as bonuses in this offer itself, resources. Uh, this is actually where I like to drop resources. Uh, notebook, right? Swag. Here's what we're going to give you guys. What's your shirt size? Because I want to give you something cool. I hate bad swag, right? This is why I came up with some of those limericks. Um, swag. Stuff we all get. <laughs> swag. Okay. So I go sideways. And so we're building the offer. What's the real offer up here? The offer mine ticket. Actually, let me... Uh, let me do that in just a moment here. Okay, next, the last part before finally putting it all together is promises or headlines. Headlines are promises, okay? So I'm gonna come up with a new promise. I'm gonna show you how to blank without blank, okay? That's the headline format that is easiest to start out with. 
Okay, so if I'm gonna, this is actually how I title the secret itself. So I was gonna do a webinar around OfferMind. I would say secret number one, I'm gonna tell you guys, let's see, it's about how different is this? Funnel Hacking Live, first inner circle meeting. Okay, so they are, how different is it? I'm gonna show you guys how, okay, this is how I brainstorm all things. This is gonna be weird at first, okay? How to, Blank. How to uh, l learn more than the organizer without, biggest fear, without, what's a good without? What are you nervous about when you come to the, how to learn, the, the learn, learn means work, so they're going to want to do that. Discover. Discover, yeah, discover more than the advertiser. Um, you know what would be cool is on the cost one, um, how to use the event lobby to make more <laughs> uh, than your flight and event ticket. Now we're giving away swag as the answer to that, so that may not work. But it could be, you know, oh, we did do this. Do you guys see the capitalist ads section of the event book? Yeah. Uh, and then also, if you were a VIP, we put your name, picture, profile, uh, description of what you do, and a link of how to contact you in the event book. <laughs> that was awesome. That was so good. But what does that do? Right, that fights the whole, um, I might forget uh, what I learned, well, at least you got relationships. Um, anyways, you guys starting to see this process? Yes. So we brainstorm out the actual promise and the slash headline, and we make sure it matches the product that we gave away. A lot of times it's the product that we're pushing in and out, like, uh, that wouldn't work anymore, but it's a really good headline. Oh, you know what, that story, now let's go back and forth. So it's kind of like this jigsaw puzzle you kind of start putting together right here until you have a great uh, headline or promise that is, to introducing the story and you're giving them the product to reinforce it. Okay, so I'm gonna tell this, the headline, that introduces, headlines are just introduction to the story. Okay, then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna tell the story and then the product is gonna be the final like, like satiator, it's gonna be the final uh, thing that makes, okay, it is fine, I did, get, I did get traffic secrets, okay, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense? It's kind of the order, so it's one, and then two, and then three. And this is how, this is how we do it. So by the time we're done, we have uh, a headline. Okay, let me erase a few things here. By the time we're done, we have a headline, we have a product, we have a solution for each part. Is this helpful to see? Yeah. This is how I really do it on my whiteboards when I'm coming up with offers and creating a sales message at the same time. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we have. So then we have a headline. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep moving here. We got the headline, and then finally the last part here is the actual offer. So I'm gonna, now it's time to go plug it and put it all together, and this is the magic right here. Okay, V-I-E-R. Well, now I have a vehicle-based product, which is the 2018 replays. Then I have the networking thing that you're gonna get for free as part of your ticket. Then you're gonna get uh, cool swag or notebooks or I'm not totally satisfied on that one yet. But uh, what, am I, what are you really gonna get though? Okay, um, I'm gonna give you an offer mine ticket. That's what I wanna sell. What do they wanna buy? What if we gave them, sometimes they're the same thing. I want you to know that too. Sometimes X and A are the exact same thing. Offer mine ticket, um, we might make replays the anchor instead and find something else in there. Um, Anyway. You had both the replays and the recordings of the live masterclass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we had OfferMind masterclass as part of that. People went nuts for that. Um, that was when I was live for like 30 hours, <laughs> going pfft, just too deep again. <laughs> Reason to act now. Reason to act now section. Um, hey, if you come get a ticket before... I'm going to fly in here. If you come get a ticket 
uh, before this specific date, um, we're going to do, and we did this also, um, we're going to give you a, uh, a special breakfast with other people who have also done that, so you can come meet the early birds. Uh, it'll be on the morning of the, it'll be the second morning at 7.30 a.m. I'll come in and say hi, and we've catered a cool breakfast for you as well. Okay, so we did a cool, cool breakfast. Now that's the offer. Now what is the difference between a Grant Cardone event ticket and that? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> An offer, right? So what I've just done is I've just created, and this is what I usually do with like corporate clients that I've had as well. We'll spend a whole day doing this. And we'll go back and forth between old story. Is that really the old story? New story. We'll also go and we'll add other things in like testimonials, different hooks inside of it. And this is a creating, this is the Xavier model. This is what I had on the board before I left the job. Um, and it was me going back and forth between, ah, oh, you know what, I think this might be the wrong one. Or, you know, let's change this one. Let's go back and forth. But literally, new story, that's the sales letter now. Okay, the only other thing I have to add inside of this, I just tell my origin story. And then at the end of secret three, I just pitched my offer. Like, there's a whole webinar right there. Make sense? Yep. Questions? Yeah. Steve, what was I again? Oh, like a networking party. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Night one, which is really to get people to register early, which is why they're doing it. <laughs> Any other questions with this? This is like a super epic model. By the time you're done with this, I mean, you have all your messages, you know why you're doing what you are, you got the stories, all the parts and pieces. You see how I don't just make up a story. The story is actually selling what's in the offer later on. That's why they have to be made together. I'm not, it's, not, it's not just a random story. Um, same thing with um, the actual headline or promise. It has to set up the story that I'm going to be telling in secret one about the vehicle concern, which is also gonna be reinforced by the bonus I give. You guys seen this? Yeah. So what's the, before you start this process, like what's the data and do you need to know all the objections? That's really the biggest part. Like who, who do you ask sort of thing? Is that your, you doing the red ocean analytics sort of stuff? Or like how do you get the first iteration, the first list? Of the objections? Before, yeah, before you cycle and iterate on that. I'll go Henry Ford and think through something that no one would ask to think through. Plato it, right? Make a prototype. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking that X and A and I'm going to people and I'm saying, what do you think about this? What about an event ticket? Right? What are you thinking? What would, what would your issues be about coming? Ah, uh, you know what? Cost, date, eyeballs are huge. Content, <laughs> worth it. ROI, am I ready? Right? And then it's literally this process where I'm going through and choosing what appears to be the most frequent vehicle one, the most frequent internal, the biggest external, that's what I then base the rest of the value bonuses on as well as the story and the promises throughout. You guys getting it? Yes. <laughs> this is epic. Okay, yeah, sir. Yeah, so on your, you said on your one, two, and three, um, can you go back over that very briefly about uh, you had the, the how-to and without? Sure. How does that tie in? Um, uh, how-to and without is just the format that I use to start brainstorming headlines right there. That's all. And so the way I present it, this is the way I order I brainstorm it in, but the way I present it is, first, I'm gonna show you, right? First I show the promise of the headline. They read the headline, they're like, oh, interesting. That really just sets up so they'll hear the story, which really just sets up so I can give them the bonus product. That's the order I do it in, but that's the order I brainstorm it in. I go sideways. Yeah. So the, the headline promise is how to benefit without biggest fear. Yeah, yeah. And so this is the way I actually really do um, uh, headlines, and I'll, I'll go kind of quick through this. I know it's getting late here. But um, this is the way I do the headlines themselves, is how to, biggest thing that they want, right? Major, major benefit. The huge goal that they're going after as it relates to vehicle, right? Then next, without, oops, without, okay. Without, yeah, biggest fear, the biggest thing they're nervous about. How to build your funnel without doing it yourself. Make sense? And I'm gonna fill in the blanks. After I have headlines in that format, the next thing I do is I'll go through the one sentence persuasion course, which says people will do anything for those who allay their, their fears, justify their failures, confirm their suspicions, help them throw rocks to their enemies. We missed one. Justify, the failures. justify failures. There we go. Okay, does that make sense? And I'm gonna go in and uh, uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to turn up the sexy on it, okay? So how to build your funnel, just to keep this example going. 
without doing it yourself. Now, if I said that to my dream who, ClickFunnels person, in my target market, ClickFunnels, is that not kind of a little bit of a jarring statement? How to get your funnel done without doing it yourself? But it's time to turn up the sexy here, okay? So justify failures. How can I justify failures? How to, how to, ooh, how to finally, what does that imply that they've tried in the past? Justify failure, okay? How to finally build your funnel without doing it yourself. Um, allay fears. Um, how to finally do it yourself. I'm uh, sorry, how to finally build your funnel without doing it yourself or wasting another dollar. And I just build on it like this format. Okay, um, confirm suspicions. This is my favorite one. It's very easy to confirm suspicions or the fact that they should be suspicious with one word, ethically. <laughs> How to ethically, finally build your funnel without doing it yourself or wasting another dollar. You see how we're taking the same basic promise and fear and we just keep building on it. Then it's like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay. I am not at, at all a professional copywriter, but it's under these principles that I still go write my headlines and put these pieces together. Okay. How to ethically, finally, um, or confirm suspicions on a sneaky, big-eyed, Gorilla, <laughs> like Steve. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but we go into the crazy zone on headlines. That's very, very important. Then we'll go back and start crossing out things that don't have, uh, you know, that don't have any viability. Um, confirm suspicions, throw rocks at enemies, throw rocks at enemies. Um, well, I kind of just did that in the bottom part. Um, justify failures. Anyway, that's, that's basically it. As I walk through and I start turning up the sexy through doing that, because now people will do anything for those who help them, all those things. And now they have a big promise. They have a big thing that is helping them not go through the fears. And it's a title for the story that I'm going to go tell. So if this was an actual title for the story, the story is probably going to be about some time I paid someone to go build a funnel for me and it didn't quite work out very well. Right? And the epiphany is going to cause them to go, oh, but there are people who are out there who actually can do this? Does that make sense? I'm gonna make sure that the story, the way I start it, actually has the epiphany planned ahead of time. Otherwise, why am I telling the story? The story is leading to the epiphany. Okay, any other questions here? This is not meant to be like a copywriting expose, but that's how I do it though. This is, uh, this is the core offer. So, so in the three uh, headlines, you wanna hit on the, those five points of the one sentence somewhere in those three secrets or in those three yeah or just whatever ones make sense it's not that you need all five but I just start kind of cherry picking the ones that make yep. sense in the headline yep absolutely yes saw another hand oh. awesome all right you guys any uh can we go back to my slides here that's the Xavier formula it's not that piece on the far right it's all of that and it's because they fuel each other again okay